Martin. What? We have two minutes before we're live. Hurry up. Let's go. Okay. I'll be right there. I'm almost done. So let's give a big round of applause for Mr. RV Street himself, Martin. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what do you think, guys? Huh? I got my hair cut. Went, I threw in the towel and went clean cut. <laughs> no more bandana and all that stuff. But uh, anyway, you know, you got you to do stuff like this to kind of make these videos entertaining. And it makes it fun for Joni and I to kind of come up with these little intros or whatever. Makes it more interesting. But anyway, enough of that nonsense. You know, if I was to choose one of the most neglected but most used pieces of equipment on an RV, it would have to be the quickie power steps. I mean, we use these all the time, but they just don't seem to get the attention that they need. Un unless, of course, they go bad or they're not working right. Now, all of a sudden, our focus goes right on the steps. So today we're going to cover the quickie power steps, how to maintain them. We're going to go over all the different components of them and some troubleshooting tips at the end. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. So when you're talking about quickie power steps, there are many, many, many different versions of them, different model numbers and all that type of thing. But most of the quickie power steps, they all pretty much share the same parts, the way they work, and the maintenance. So it would be impossible for me to cover every single model. But because they all share so much of the same thing, we're going to use our power steps to demonstrate in this video. We have the series 25 quickie power steps and it's a three step version. Now taking care of your power steps is a really important thing. I want to just point out one thing to you. The steps alone, okay, if these steps got damaged or bent or for whatever reason they had to be replaced, these steps for us, our particular model, just the steps is almost a thousand dollars. And that's not including any of the motor, the gearbox, the controller, or anything. That's just for the, the metal steps and the linkage themselves. So it really pays to take care of these steps. Now, some of you may know this and some may not, but Lippert bought out Quickie Power Steps. So now if you ever need to go back to the manufacturer and get your manuals or parts and so forth, the manufacturer, which is now Lippert, they would be one source to go back and get your to get parts. But Lippert is not the only one. I'm just letting you know that they are now the parent company of Quickie Power Steps. So the first thing I want to cover is what not to do to your steps. The first thing not to do is to step on these steps before they are fully deployed. You do not want to do that. And the reason is when you step and put weight on these steps before they're fully deployed, you're putting a lot of resistance and weight on these steps, which makes the motor work a whole lot harder. And that's going to burn out that motor a whole lot quicker than if you just let them come out on their own power. And you could also do damage to the gearbox. Now we're going to show you all those parts in a minute. Wait till the steps are fully deployed before you step out on them. The next thing I want to cover of what not to do is to pull out of a campground, pull out of your house, pull out of anywhere with your steps out. Now you may say, Martin, of course, that's, that's, that's a given. Well, let me tell you a quick little story. Joni and I, when we were in RGV, there was a big DP behind us, a diesel pusher. And we got to know him for the last week or so he was there. And he was leaving that following morning. So I heard him start up the diesel pusher and I went over and said goodbye to him one last time. And as he was pulling out and just beginning to round off out onto the street, I looked back there and his steps are out. And I ran over to him and I knocked on his door and I said, hey, Steve, 
He's like, I said, man, your, your steps are out. And he goes, what? Well, come to find out his magnetic switch on the door was not working properly, which I will show you all about that in just a minute. But the point is, is that always make sure before you pull out, have your wife or your husband, or if, if you're driving alone and you close that door, look out and make sure that those steps are totally in before you pull out. So you can see right here when you open up the door, you have this switch right here. This is one half of it. The other part is right here. So when you close the door, those two pieces match and that's what activates the switch. Let's go inside and look at how that works. So you can see right here, those two pieces. You see when you close the door, those two pieces, this is the other side of the switch. And you see those two red wires right there? Those two red wires are what goes to the controller on the steps. So when you open the door, it sends a signal to the controller, the door is opening, therefore deploy the, the steps. Now, if you have the switch off, it won't do that. This switch overrides this, okay? If, you're, if your steps ever start to act up, sometimes they'll go out, sometimes they won't, they open on their own, that type of thing, this is the first place to look at. And you can see, that the distance between these two is about the thickness of a finger. Can you see that? About two years ago, our stairs were acting up. What happened was, was on this switch here on the bottom, there's a screw and that screw came loose and this opened up here. This, this bottom piece slid way over here and there was a big gap here. And therefore, the contact switch was not working correctly. This is exactly what happened to that story I told you about that DP who was pulling out and his stairs were deployed. This is what was wrong. So when he, when he closed the door, he thought his steps were in, but he didn't check. Come to find out, this was the problem right here. He, ha he actually, on his case, he had a wire loose right here. So if you're having any issues with your steps not operating co correctly, this is the first place to look. Okay, so let's cover what you should do. If you remember in my three-part series of crucial, high-priority stuff, every RVer should be carrying with them at all times. Well, in part one, that was one of the first things I covered, was get all your manuals. So Lippert, since Lippert has acquired uh, uh, Quickie Steps, that's where you go to get your manual. And I'll put a link down below in the description text that'll take you right to that area. You can find your appropriate manual and download that now. Now, once you're parked at your final destination, the first thing you should do is turn off your power switch, your step switch. It's also called an override switch. Now, some of you may have one, some of you may not, but most will. Let me show you where, where ours is. So here is our step switch right here. When we're underway, that switch goes on and that way it will automatically come in. And now we're ready to set up, we turn the switch off. If you do not turn that switch off, every time you open and close the door, your steps are gonna keep coming in and out, in and out. Once you are parked in your final destination, you turn that switch off and that locks them out into the off position. Now, even with that switch in the off position, if you put the key in the ignition and turn the, the ignition on, these steps are going to immediately come in because there's a built-in safety feature there. When that key goes in and you turn it on, the coach is thinking, okay, they're getting ready to pull out. I'm pulling in the steps. So you can override that switch, whether it's on or off with the ignition switch. Okay, so as I said, different quickie steps have different kinds of mechanisms here. Some have bigger bushings in here, uh, some do not. But again, it, it's still the same uh, maintenance process. The weight is supported by these clevis pins and these cams down here. So this takes the burden of all the weight. You're getting all this bouncing going on and it's putting stress in these areas. 
So a really good thing to do is support it with a utility step and keep these steps from bouncing. Now you can see here, this is our third step we bought. Like everything else that I recommend to you, I don't always recommend the most expensive thing or, the, or anything like that. I, we've already experienced so many failures. I'm recommending of what's, what works right, okay? So I don't want you to be wasting your money like we did. So having a utility step is really good. We had two others and they were both junk. They were slippery when they were wet. That's the importance of having a sturdy utility step. Now, even though the one that we have chose here is adjustable, these legs will go out and in, we have found over time, we carry assorted different boards uh, for multiple reasons. We use them for under our tires. We use them sometimes to help us level one side or the other. But we also use some boards that'll take up the proper gap because you can see here on this one, if I lift up the steps, I can take that. You see all that play? See that? That's what's happening every time you step on these steps. It's bouncing and rolling and it's putting stress on these clevis pins and, and the linkage. So by putting a firm utility uh, step stool here, I can just take what I need and now there is no play. By using a utility stand and the wood by, and that securing these steps, that not only will make it safer, but it'll take the stress off of your steps bouncing up and down. So again, when you're wrapping everything up and before you put that key in the ignition, make sure you've removed the utility uh, stand. Now let's go to the next item. Let's talk about step covers. Now, even though uh, most steps have a non-skid material on them, when they get wet, they can still be very dangerous for people and pets. I mean, you know how sometimes these pets, boy, they're anxious to get out and they come running down these steps. And even with that non-skid material, they can slip and hurt themselves and so can people. And again, when you're full timing, you don't want to have a liability. This is probably one of the most areas a, a person or a guest or a family member can get hurt is coming up and down steps, and especially when they're wet. So in my opinion, having good solid uh, step covers is a really important thing, not only for safety, but it gives you another area to wipe your feet off before you enter the coach. We have bought other sets of covers. Oh, they were cheap. They were the right color. We thought, oh, that would match the coach nice. They were junk. It's another one of those uh, cases. You get what you pay for. We finally found these jewels here. Our steps are 24 inches wide and the covers are 23 inches wide. Now, this is what our steps look like before we put on covers. Then here's one piece before I installed it. You can see I laid it up here to kind of show what it looked like. Notice the heavy duty metal grommets to secure them. You fasten them underneath with electrical ties that came with ours. But I didn't really like the thickness of those electrical ties. I knew that they would probably dry out and break fairly quickly. So I got some really heavy duty ties that you can see here. And this is what these steps look like installed and fully retracted. Okay, so these step covers here, you can see how thick they are. And they've got a really deep tread. They're not only UV protected against sun damage and fading, but they're resistant to uh, mold and mildew too. Now these come in three colors, Sierra Brown, which is what these are, Black Granite and Midnight Blue. So that's why Joni and I, we just love these covers. Uh, there's just nothing else better out there on the market as far as we're concerned. Okay, so let's get into doing maintenance on these uh, steps. Rubber gloves. I put my sleeves on whenever I'm working on something, protect my arms. And you want eye protection because what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take some brake cleaner and we are going to shoot some of this down in between these clevis pins. You can just see that dirt coming out of there. And if you have hair, Again, pet hair getting involved in there. You can brush that out, pull it out, whatever you need to do. These need to get clean. But this is the very easy way to do it. And you're done. Those things are clean. Now, let's talk about lubing. 
As you know, I'm online a lot and people make this so much more difficult than it really needs to be. I use silicone. I use WD-40. I uh, Look, it's not that complicated. You do not want to use WD-40 because WD-40, it just evaporates. If you use lithium grease, it gets all, it's white and thick and it gets cakey and it doesn't really penetrate down in there. These are heavy moving parts. Now, Quickie makes their own lubricant, but I have found that chain wax is as good or better. It's a thick kind of a lubricant. I'll show you a little bit here on a paper towel. You see that? It's a really nice, it's a penetrating type of a, a lubricant, but it doesn't evaporate. So I take this aerosol chain wax after I've cleaned them, and now I, look how I lubricate that. You see, you really want to be liberal here, okay? Let it soak, you start from the top, and that way it runs down and around. You see that? Get down in there, let that just kind of ooze around there. You see that? And on this cam right here, you want to put some right in there. Come back with a paper towel and just dry off the outside spray that gets on the linkage. This side's done. By lubricating the linkage and keeping them clean, now as they go in and out, they have no resistance. They're, they're, all the parts are moving uh, very freely, which is easy on the motor, easy on the, uh, the gearbox, it's easy on everything. Very important thing to do. I'll give you a schedule for all this stuff at the end of this video. So before we go underneath the coach, one safety tip, make sure you tell everybody, I'm going underneath to work on the steps, don't anybody turn on the step switch and don't anybody put the key in the ignition. Um, some people would say, just disconnect the, neg the negative cable on your battery. Look, it's not necessary. Just let everybody know you're gonna be underneath there. This, this whole job only takes maybe 10 minutes. So now let's go under the coach and let's take care of the stuff underneath there. What we're gonna do, is we're gonna take a brass bristle brush, a piece of 220 sandpaper, some battery terminal protector, our chain wax, our brake cleaner, paper towels. So let's put our cardboard up underneath here. Okay, so here we are under the steps. You can see the wiring that comes from the control panel right here. And I tied all this up and brought it over to the main harnesses because when we first got this coach, all this wiring was all hanging down in here, and that's not good. You want to be able to have this all tucked up and out of the way where it won't snag on something. It keeps water off of it and all that type of stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to clean the ground wire. You can see in my wiring harness here, we have the ground wire that comes from the controller. It's tied up and it's bolted to the chassis. One of the most common problems if you're having electrical issues is it can be a ground. So what I do every time I come underneath here is I clean that ground. So what I'm, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brake cleaner and I spray that so it'll get all that dirt and that's why you wanna be wearing safety glasses. And then I take my brass bristle brush and I get up there and I clean the outside of that post. There really is no need to loosen this ground wire. We're just trying to get the corrosion and dirt and stuff like that off of there. I like using a brass bristle brush uh, better because it's not as, ab as abrasive as a steel brush. Then we're gonna come up there and clean it one more time. And then we're gonna take my battery post terminal protector and I'm gonna spray that over that. Just a couple, three shots on there to protect that wire that bolt and that negative uh, connection. So here is the light that comes on when you open up the door, whether the uh, steps are out or in. Uh, most all of you I know will have a step light. And when I changed all of our bulbs inside and out to LEDs, I also changed out this one. And by the way, uh, I'll put this in the link also down in the description area, but we've uh, partnered up with a great company that has every possible uh, LED light bulb that you can think of, plus a lot of other uh, electrical supplies. So be sure to look for that because we have a special uh, coupon code 
And if you use that, you'll get a 5% discount. This is the controller. Now these controllers are, they're pretty bulletproof. Um, I mean, they do go bad from time to time, but for the most part, these controllers, they rarely will go out. The next thing is the motor and underneath the motor is the gearbox. So when the steps go in and out, the motor is activated. This is 12 volt. This will work off of your batteries, whether you're plugged in or not, right? So there's no high voltage in here. So when you open up the door and that magnet switch that I showed you inside the door sends a signal to the controller, activates the motor, which turns the gearbox and that rotates this uh, main big gear to retract or deploy the stairs. So this area needs to be lubed and cleaned too. Using the kind of grease I showed you is important here because again, this is a heavy duty uh, working area, but you can see that it's dirty. Now, normally I would be, I would position myself way outside this and I would shoot this brake cleaner all in there and wash all that off. But Joni's underneath here with me. That stuff is strong and I don't have any place to uh, safely shoot that. So I'm going to use paper towels, spray the brake cleaner on the paper towels and clean this old lubricant off of here, okay? And the reason I'm doing this cleaning is not only get any dirt and dust and stuff off of there, but I wanna be able to clean this area. And you can see, I mean, that area that's wearing right there, I mean, that's normal wear. I wanna be able to get that clean so the grease won't get inside my sandpaper. So I'm just gonna lightly sand those grooves. I mean, I can barely get that with my nail there. I'm just making sure that there's no burr or anything like that on there. This is a very good example of a kind of normal wear that you're going to get with a nine year old set of steps. And to keep that wear from getting deeper, you wanna use the right lubricant. Now, before I go lubing this up, Let's go over to this piece right here. So what motorizes these steps, again, is two pieces. You got your motor and your gearbox. And a new motor and a gearbox together, if you buy them from the manufacturer, which is Lippert now, is gonna be somewhere around 200 bucks or so, depending on the model that you have. But there's a lot of options online that are a lot cheaper. You can pretty much buy the motor and the gearbox assembly at most auto parts stores like Napa, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, any of those places, the best thing to do would be to bring the whole unit in to the auto parts store, have them match it up. You would, re you would unplug the power right here. You would remove these screws and drop this unit. But you've noticed here, this has a label called AM. But AM equipment is a fantastic place to find uh, these replacement parts. Uh, they have just about every kind of part and gearbox you need. They're at least half of what you would pay anywhere else. And I will also give you the link to the description area about uh, how to contact them too. One really eye-opening thing is, is that these gearbox and motors, um, a very common replacement piece here is a driver's side power window assembly. That's amazing, isn't it? So, it's like a lot of things with RVs. If you go to the manufacturer, you're gonna buy this specific unit for them and they're gonna charge you three times as much. But if you go to a parts store and get this unit for a power window, you're gonna pay half, maybe a third. So this is a really good resource uh, on how to get these replacement parts if you ever need to. Now, sometimes in a pinch, if your steps begin to fail or they're not working correctly, the first place to go is up here in the controller box, and you see there's a fuse right here. You see that? Check this fuse first, and make sure that that fuse is still good. If the fuse is good, and the motor is still not working, the steps are not deploying or retracting, or they may be jumpy or whatever, you can take a light hammer or a mallet, a rubber mallet. You see why it's good to have right tools? and take and tap on this. Over time, as this motor works back and forth hundreds and thousands of times, sometimes these brushes 
uh, need to get reset. Uh, they'll get loose and they'll lose their contact and that's why you're getting that jittery uh, movement. So if you take a soft rubber mallet and just tap on this, it sometimes will reset those brushes and your motor will begin to operate uh, right again. But that certainly is a clear signal that you need to put this on the list and probably change this motor out very soon. Now let's say in a pinch that the motor is frozen. Your steps have come all the way out and no matter what you've done, they will not come in. What you can do is again, remove the screws, unplug this, drop the motor, and that will remove the resistance inside here. And now you'll be able to push them in by hand. You'll be able to tie them up with a rope or a bungee cord or whatever to get you to a place where you can get the right part and repair it properly. And we're going to go ahead and lube this up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take my chain wax right here, you see, and we're going to get this linkage, put some nice fresh lube on here. And then we're going to do this here all along this gear. And we're also going to put a little shot up on top. It's going to come up in there. And what happens with this lube, why I really like this is when it, so once it comes out of the can and it sits for a few minutes, and especially when it gets, when it's cold, uh, it'll thicken up and that's what you want. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get right in behind the gearbox here. And again, I like to shoot it from the top and let it kind of get down in there. And that's pretty much it. I'll wipe off any of the little excess off of this linkage and I'm going to get a little bit more back up in here. And there you have it. Now, while we're under here, there's one other thing. Remember when we did all that cleaning and lubricating of the linkage outside? You can see here, here's a couple more spots. I'm going to, I'm going to do this now, but not on camera because Joni, she's going to get that stuff in her eyes and I need to, I need to do this uh, without her being here, but I'm going to go ahead and clean this, this one, this one, and this one on both sides. And that will take care of all the outside linkage and we've taken care of everything underneath here. So now that we've just got through doing all of that cleaning, and lubing, what we're going to do is we're going to exercise that part. So we're going to open up the door. We're going to turn on the switch. Let them come in. Open the door. And let them deploy. Turn the switch back off. Put our utility step and our blocks back in there. So just to cover in summary real quick about the uh, troubleshooting tips. Remember, if, you're, if your steps start to act up, check your ground wire. Maybe that's the problem. Make sure it's clean and make sure it's tight. Check your controller fuse. Make sure that it hasn't blown. If you suspect your motor is seized or not working, try the rubber mallet and just tap on it and try to reset those brushes. Sometimes that works. And one other thing that I didn't show you underneath there, but that little connector plug that comes out of the back of your motor, Sometimes you can just disconnect that connector, spray some brake clean in there or some electrical cleaner, let it dry, plug it back in. You may be getting a better connection that way. And also don't forget the magnetic switch up here behind your door. Make sure that that hasn't come loose and you have the proper gap in there. Those are pretty much the five things that you can look for right off the bat if your steps are starting to act up. Uh, anytime you do a maintenance item like this, you want to enter it in your logbook. Put the date, what you did, part numbers that you used, and tools and things like that. So you'll not only have a record of when you last did it, but if you ever decide to sell your coach or your RV, you've got proof of all the different things you did and when you did them. And also for you, if you had to ever replace a part or needed a special socket or whatever you don't remember, you can just go back to your logbooks and that refresh your memory. That makes doing this kind of stuff really easy. So a few closing notes. You know how I stress uh, preventative maintenance. I like to be preemptive in taking care of these things. And what you basically saw here was how to make your steps safe by putting covers on them, how to keep them stable by using a utility stand and blocking it permanently so you don't put so much stress on your clevis pins and the linkage. Then we did a lot of cleaning. We did a little bit of light sanding and heavy lubing. 
and that kind of lubing with that lubricant is important. Now, that, this is what I call a full cleaning job. I do this about once every three months. I crawl up underneath there and I do everything that I just showed you. But once a month, I come and I do the linkage, okay? I just get my, I get my lube and I'll give all these points out here a quick shot. And if you do that, your steps are gonna last a long time. Oh, and don't step on them until they're fully deployed, right? But like I said, these steps here are nine years old and yours can be nine years old without any issues too, if you take care of them. I got a question of the day for you, uh, but I'm gonna leave that at the very last because I wanna cover a few things for those who do not follow this channel. The purpose of our channel is to equip and to show how to do different things. Now, I don't know how to do everything, but I share with you the things that I do know. I, I want you to have confidence that you can do this. You can do these things. Uh, by doing them yourselves and having the right tools, you're not gonna get stranded. You're not gonna be stuck in a place where, okay, what do I do now? Or having to call a mobile tech and spend a lot of money. Uh, you can do this stuff yourself. I'm going to put links in the description area for everything that we use today. Just go to the, where the video is and underneath you'll see show more. Click that, scroll down, they'll be right there. If you are on a tablet or a phone, you'll probably have a little arrow underneath the video on the right hand side. Click that, scroll down and they'll be there. For those of you who aren't familiar with our YouTube channel, if you'll go to our main YouTube channel page and click playlist, that will take you to our playlist page and click RV motorhome upgrades, maintenance and DIY how to's. And there's already a wealth of information right there. Let me leave you with a question. What is the one thing you could do personally to make taking care of your RV and your maintenance items easier. I mean, maybe some of you have been putting off getting that ladder you need. Maybe it's organizing your storage bays better. Maybe you've been meaning to buy this or that tool, but you've been putting it off. I mean, I don't know what it is. So let me know down in the comments. I'd be interested to know uh, what it is you could do. And uh, it'll encourage others too. I mean, this is how we all grow, right? So come on guys, give me a like if you like this. If this helped you, Give me a like, and if you haven't subscribed already, consider subscribing, and if you do subscribe, don't forget to ring the bell off to the right so you'll be notified the next time we upload our next video. And these are free. It does not cost any money to subscribe. So anyway, that about wraps it up on how to step up and take care of your quickie power steps. Now get to work. Until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around. 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 Stick around.